problem, 7700X. At this point in time, is that CPU even worth it? Should you buy the 7700X or not? What are the factors that make the choice so hard for us? What should you be aware of before deciding to go with the 7700X? Because as a matter of fact, that CPU does a lot of things right, but doesn't entirely fit into the most recent CPU landscape in terms of pricing, since Intel clearly crashed AMD's party. My dear friends, today it's the AMD Ryzen 7 7700X that's going to get most of my attention. It comes equipped with 8 fast cores and 16 threads, all based on juicy Zen 4. Price. According to AMD, we're looking at an MSRP of 399 US dollars for the 7700X, which is a lot more affordable than those Ryzen 9 heavyweights I've reviewed previously. Right now in November 2022, you're spending about 390 to 400 dollars. Today I'll once again be comparing against X CPU legends, such as the Ryzen 7 5800X, so basically its direct predecessor, as well as the 7700X's grandpa, namely Ryzen 7 3800X, which dates back to 2019. I would have loved to implement test results of Intel's Raptor Lake CPUs into this video, but my Intel delivery still hasn't quite arrived just yet, but there soon will follow reviews of those. At this point I'd also like to use the possibility to thank Yorgios over at the online shop Equipper for getting hold on all these CPUs for my testing. This shoutout is done voluntarily, I've paid for all this out of my own pocket. Hashtag not sponsored. Architecture. As already mentioned, the Ryzen 7 7700X is based on Zen 4. The cores make use of TSMC's 5 nanometer process, whereas the IO die is based on 6 nanometers. Needless to say, AMD makes use of their chiplet design approach, but one big advantage for gaming right here might be the single CCD coming into play. The 8 cores, officially at least, are on a single CCD. By how much that actually affects gaming performance, you're about to find out shortly. I'd like to have it said once more that AMD now included AMD Radeon graphics for their entire new CPU lineup. My thoughts and more so experience with it you'll get to see in an upcoming separate video of mine. Now since AM5 marks AMD's latest socket, there are of course notoriously pricey new motherboards to choose from. In fact, we can choose from 4 chipsets in total, going by the names of X670E, X670, B650E and B650. As you are probably all aware of it, not a whole lot of people agree on those high platform costs AMD wants us to pay nowadays. But still we are not only getting new tech such as DDR5 RAM, but also the blazing fast PCIe 5.0 standard. According to AMD's claims, the AM5 platform, along with the mentioned chipsets, should be supported up until 2025 and maybe even beyond that. Test setup. This time around I've put the Ryzen 7 7700X onto the respectably equipped ASRock B650E Steel Legend motherboard. The eye-catch design might not be everyone's cup of tea, but from a technical standpoint, certainly a great board. Even though I personally find the number of SATA ports to be a little bit too low. As for the RAM, I'm going with my trusty Kingston Fury Beast RGB 32GB 6000MHz kit with CL36 timings. This memory kit, by the way, does not just simply support classic XMP, but also comes with Expo profiles specifically designed for AMD CPUs. This toasty new chip by AMD is being cooled by my usual Be Quiet Pure Loop 2 FX liquid cooler, the 360mm version of it. AM5 does not pose any issue for that AIO. Last but not least, we need the graphics card to complete the equation. For that I'm going with my trusty ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC to eliminate most of the GPU bottlenecks plaguing my test system. Clock speeds. Initially we're for the most part looking at a stable 5.1, 5.125 GHz at full load. Since the 7700X comes with only a single CCD, there's hardly any difference between these 8 active cores, unlike with the 7900X that comes with 2 CCDs. I can also confirm that even at high temperatures, the clock speeds remain fairly stable, 
we're losing out on maybe like 25 MHz at max, and that's negligible. As was the case with the 7900X, I too could read out a higher than stated boost clock by AMD for my 7700X. I managed to exceed AMD's max clock by a whopping 100 MHz. With my configuration, that's 5.5 GHz. In game, the clock speed does tend to jump up and down slightly from 4.4 to 5.5 GHz. For the majority of the time, I was looking at 5.5, though. Certainly a nice clock speed. Performance. Without the slightest doubt, I can say the Ryzen 7 7700X does kick some serious ass. It's a great and very capable CPU. Even though these 8 Zen 4 cores offer nice productivity performance, all in all, they don't stand a chance against the higher number found on those higher end and more expensive Ryzen 9 models. Still, the 7700X can be put to good use for productivity workloads, such as rendering and the like. Maybe not professionally, that is. But just as expected, the 7700X does phenomenally well in terms of gaming performance and hardly ever drops behind the Ryzen 9 7950X flagship model. Except for some rare instances, in reality, it doesn't seem to make a difference whether you put a 7700X or 7950X into your gaming rig. And that's what the 11 game average certainly is able to confirm. But why is that? Why doesn't the overall better, higher performing CPU not do better? That's because not every game out there can make use of, let's say, 12 cores and 24 threads. Since the 7700X comes with 8 cores that essentially clock just as high as the 7900X and 7950X CPUs do, at the end of the day, in games, there's no real difference. The remaining cores can, however, 
be put to good use for background tasks, basically preventing the drop of gaming performance when programs are running in the background. So for streamers, a 7900X with 12 cores could in some instances appear to make sense, or something comparable by Intel. I'd go as far and state that the 7700X for pure gamers might be the CPU to go for. However, we haven't quite factored in what Intel's 13th gen lineup is capable of. So don't take my bold claim too seriously just yet. Furthermore, I'd like to, or rather have to let you know about the noticeably cheaper Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with 3D vCache. Especially the lower platform costs make the 5800X 3D a rather compelling option, or even better, you already own the AIM4 platform and just need to spend the money on the 3D cache optimized CPU. Alternatively, you could go down the DDR4 path with Intel's Alder Lake and Raptor Lake platforms in order to save some money, even though the solution is not perfect. Unfortunately, I've never owned a 5800X 3D and therefore could not conduct any testing with it at any point in time. So what's actually the problem with the Ryzen 7 7700X? What makes the choice so difficult for us? Simple. Not really a surprise, it's the high entry level price for the new platform. Not just the CPU alone is affected by it, but so are the motherboard and memory as well. Compared to what we've been offered by AMD in the past, and given the perfectly valid options we still see on the AM4 platform, this new yet speedy 7700X remains fairly unattractive. The CPU in itself is great of course, don't get me wrong, but a somewhat decent price to performance ratio does actually play a role at the end of the day. To make matters worse, one has to admit Intel has released some quite attractive new Raptor Lake processors at tempting price points. Motherboards for the most part are more affordable as well, as opposed to boards for AMD's new platform. Furthermore, you might need to factor in some additional costs for a decent, capable CPU cooler because I read out 93 degrees Celsius for the 7700X, and that's with a 360mm AIO liquid cooler. So the temperatures are not great to put it mildly, although AMD states that up to 95 degrees are totally fine and quote unquote normal. But do not panic just yet, with simple PBO2 tuning you can easily lower the temperatures by a lot without actually having to really lose any noteworthy performance. Needless to say, that also applies to the power consumption, even though those measured 235 watts for the whole system don't appear too bad to me personally. You draw about as much as with the Ryzen 9 5900X. However, in productivity workloads, the 7700X cannot keep up with a 5900X. In gaming, it's a whole different story. So the power draw I consider somewhat okay this time around. Luckily, things can still be optimized as said. The power draw at idle doesn't really seem to change that much at all though. So I'm left again to complain about those 81 watts, I guess. In the future, I'll also enter more data into the chart power consumption while gaming. Conclusion The purchasing decision for the Ryzen 7 7700X certainly is not an easy one. In simple words, it's a matter of pricing. The price of the CPU in itself maybe is somewhat fair, but it's hard to justify the prices seen on motherboards, RAM and now even a capable CPU cooler. But mostly it's the motherboards that eat away at one's budget. So the more you climb down the Ryzen 7000 ladder, the more you notice that the platform costs do not necessarily scale well. Basically, if you're asking me, we need much cheaper motherboards to choose from. I wish AMD would have considered allowing for halfway decent boards to be out for $150 or so. Which is why I have a bit of a hard time recommending the 7700X. If you try and ignore all the costs involved, a truly great CPU, no doubt. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.